Ya, Gajanan. Hello, Gajanan. Yeah, I'm just sharing the entire screen. You guys can see this. Is this visible to all? Hello? Is it visible? Yes, it's visible. Okay, great. So, uh, well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I just wanted to make sure uh, you know, I can cover uh, as much of my experience with regards to the startup uh, journey that I've had and uh, also the academic uh, side of my journey. Um, so, for all of you, it is more of uh, you know, a every session, but I wanted to be interactive. So, I've got not more than three uh, slides, and uh, we just talk about more of this. Uh, if there is an interest to understand, you know, what you need to expect. And uh, how your curriculum uh, uh, how is it to be applied in the industry? So that's what my focus is in this, uh, this lecture. And I hope I can discuss it with the zone over. I can feel free to ask questions. I think uh, one thing is you can write your questions in the message box. Uh, that is one way of you can feel uh, there and there, or you can just uh, pop in and ask at any time. So, that's about me. Uh, gotcha. Yes. Gajanan, there is some. I think there is some issue with the voice. Uh, you don't hear me clearly. Clarity of voice. Clarity of voice. Uh, okay. Uh, sir, I think you can. Uh, sir, I think you can hold your uh, mic a little bit closer to you. Uh, no, my camera and the mic are the same. So, oh, acha. Okay, okay, sir. Is this clear? Hello? Is this clear? Yes, sir. Better, sir. It's it's better. Okay, fine. Uh, I'll try my best to be uh, more open and uh, up to the voice. I just want to shut up my video so we get more banter on the voice. Uh, Okay, so that's is this slide clear to all? I mean, I can see the slide. Can you see this slide? Yes, sir. Yes, 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 yeah. Okay, sounds good. So uh, that's a little about me. I did my engineering. Uh, from uh, public Assam College Engineering to the first batch. So, uh, uh, the principal, uh, Professor Dina uh, Pandekar, uh, used to be one of our first uh, lecturers early in uh, the first year for us. Uh, we've had a long journey from then. Uh, so, there's a few things for y'all to understand that all the many people who start careers on different sides, you know, we started as a student. And uh, many lecturers started as a professor, and uh, where they wanted to work many years. So that's a good uh, journey to look at uh, with regards to how academia or industry went. So I did my uh, bachelor's in uh, engineering in electronics and communication, and then I did my master's in environmental engineering uh, from MIT Wellcome, and uh, then I did my uh, I started my actually uh, graduate studies uh, uh, with uh, University of Wisconsin in Milwaukee. 
Uh, I have about 10 years of experience in product and research. I mean, mostly, uh, until the age of 30, I think, or a little more, 2022, I can say I was pretty much involved in academic research. Uh, I did definitely take a job between 27 years of age and 30. Uh, that was at GU Healthcare. And uh, that's before GU Healthcare in India. Uh, my core area of uh, expertise there was magnetic resonance imaging. And uh, uh, that's MRI. And of course, uh, being from the biomedical background, that's what uh, this uh, means. Uh, it was initially, uh, I was out of my, uh, what do you say, uh, curriculum in uh, PC. I was looking at two career paths. One was in image processing, one was in uh, uh, microelectronics, which is near us already. And whereas I decided to take up language processing, but more uh, not from, like, uh, of course, how, how things uh, worked out the work from a device perspective. And uh, then, of course, software and the product as uh, that's how it evolved, and that's how I went in my research for MRI itself. Uh, and that's why I started my PhD at uh, UW Milwaukee. And uh, I wound it up with a master's because uh, we won a Wisconsin government business plan competition there. And that year we decided, okay, I'm going to accommodate this to the career part to take, and that do your PhD and get into like, uh, you know, the industry or a single own startup. So that was a difficult choice then, but I think that really was sweet, so uh, not a problem. So overall, my experience has been, uh, you know, starting from everything from an ideation stage to building a sales into the country, and uh, complete cycle of, uh, you know, how we look at product development and, uh, and a complete uh, understanding of how services or product companies work, and uh, how we would have to evolve to become, uh, you know, get a foot into the market really for that way. Uh, I think my next journey from here on will be something like scaling up to, the, you know, five million dollar business or fifty million dollar business uh, here on. And, the initial start was going to get things into the market in smaller So uh, below the five million uh, part as we well. Okay, uh, so that's about me, and this is what we did. We just a small box, which is about 180 grams, uh, uh, which was connected to a USB cable to an Android phone or a tablet. And there was a mobile application here, which was cloud connected, and this cloud connection is something like a uh, Gmail. Where you can access it from your uh, phone as well as your laptop. So this had a web-based uh, or, or rather a PC software, and also a web-based uh, you know method where you could, uh, whatever you could record on this phone would automatically a signal be also uh, available on the PC or desktop for any different thing or something. Like that. Okay, and uh, that's how from with regards to it. Birthday, um, we tend to make it, uh, you know lay, lay down the patient. Put up this thing, uh, put up the leads, uh, the data goes to the server, goes to the doctor, doctor can report using a laptop or a phone, and then that will come back to the server, go back to the person who's recording it, right? And this is our standard ECD looks like. So these are three different ways of package things, just like uh, whichever is kind of an uh, you know, easy pouch um, uh, for the and then you must be working with the tablet inside and Hold on the housing for it, and then this was a more major fit having ECG uh, that uh, and the blood oxygen level. So, you know, these are the features of the product per se. Uh, I just have these three slides about the product, uh, and then uh, I just want to get back to what we were talking about. So, uh, we had a small discussion during the last ICC meeting uh, with regards to professors and stuff, and saying, you know, there is sometimes a gap with regards to how curriculum is engaged or taught. And uh, since we are in a, uh, not a you know uh, evolved uh, industry setup where your uh, college uh, lectures every day are more based on some uh, you know real industry principles, right? So you listen or you hear some theory that someone is teaching matrices, and you get more I have been learning matrices since in standard now. I come from an ICC, which are more and more probably from 11 or 12. In 11, 12, first year, and then third year, and then I think that you know, you're still doing matrices and matrices. You know, really don't know what matrices are, uh, you know, determinants and what you can do with them, right? You really don't know how it applies to the industry. And then, uh, as you graduate, you say, okay, what is the next career part? And everyone says, hey, you know what, AI yeah, is becoming great, so that can be that. And then no one understands really what artificial intelligence is or, you know, what the meaning of this fundamental. So my journey, what I'm trying to share with you all is that I never understood this. I had the same question. No one answered them or no one could answer them clearly. I have seen this even when I got a big strength in the uh, I have been, I have taught uh, for about six months. 
I'm very proud to say one of my students in environmental engineering elective uh, has a PhD in work in Ushida in Japan today. And uh, he has a PhD from Korea. So that's a very, very well, uh, and again, in the next process of our energy work. So that, that is something uh, I'm very proud about. And again, I'm PCC alumni. And, uh, you know, uh, what I'm trying to say here is that the experience is what I'm trying to share here. And that experience is regards to saying, uh, where and how did I understand where all these things connected together? So for me, my fundamental understanding was that everything in engineering that we learn is fundamental physics and maths. Okay, you go back to your 11th standard, 12th standard physics and maths, and I think that is all the fundamentals that we learn. What you learn beyond it after that in engineering is a, a, is a more of an application. You know, the fundamentals are pretty much in it. Like 11, 12, 12, mostly is focused on calculus, right? Whereas if you look at the American University, the calculus and all is covered only in engineering uh, days because many students won't do it up here as well standard. So it's an optional thing. Alright, so all said and done, you guys have studied differentiation and integration. Can any of your students tell me what is a differentiation and what is the integration of the formula? I mean, not the formula, everyone knows the formula. What does it really mean, right? You have a function. Now let's say a function is a sine wave. What is the differentiation and what is the integration? What does it mean? Can anyone help me here? If the students can answer, the professors can answer. <laughs> Since I'm sharing my screen, I cannot see anyone chatting in the chat window, so please uh, speak up, that will be easier for me. Are the students online or anyone's gone back to some computer gaming? No answer. No, student, students are online. Yeah, no, I'm saying, uh, they're not answering the question. So my question is that if I have a function, like a sine wave or sine wave or anything that you want to take as a function, what does differentiation of that function or integration of the function mean? <laughs> Okay, I hold on to that question. Okay, so what I'm saying in this slide is uh, actually that how does an engineering curriculum relate to products or services or solutions to industrial solutions? Okay, so now what do we do in the industry? Right? Uh, let me see here. What do we do here? We have an idea. That's what uh, you maybe set fire or anyone of the understand that this is what you do. The first thing people say, what is your idea? Like, what are you going to try to do? If you go even with a project, the professor is going to ask you the same question. What is your idea? What do you want to do? The second is then you have to build a prototype. Right? I mean, it's like a small, crude form of, uh, like, I don't know if you all want to get into this lecture or this one of Thomas was uh, uh, explaining about how to build a normal system function, right? The ideation is the prototype is the whole viable product. So prototype is what we do. I mean, Yes, the idea is even we make a doable. And then once it's doable, we get it to a point in a form and a method which is saying, okay, this can be kind of shown out to people or demonstrated at some conference or something like that. Right? So that is what we call MVP, that's minimal viable product. Okay, minimum viable product. Then we go down and say, okay, uh, I've got the sequence wrong here, I'm just going to choose or go change the I'm just going to do something here of the quality uh, is because uh, fact that quality is something that is very important. Like when we build a minimum viable product, if it's, we come from a medical background, right? Okay. Uh, for us, everything that we use, even a plastic, even a rubber of any kind, has to be non-allergic. Uh, if you don't know, many people have rubber, uh, natural rubber can be called allergic. If they touch like a rubber glove, they actually clear the skin to start getting rashes. Some people have that, uh, not many, but many. And hence, it just has to be native skin, and that's why you see a lot of microbes, a lot of skin. And that's what it is. And uh, so, quality for us is what's most important. So, even every, every screw that you use in a medical device has to come from a very uh, certified uh, standard. It doesn't, uh, it's not something that you can just plug in. So every product that you really see, not the ones which come from China, okay, but every product that you see from the European side or anything which has a standard, even the Chinese one, which have real standard certification. Uh, listed on it, they are of utmost quality. Everything in it, the screw, the plastic, the, the circuit board, the components, everything is to be sure of a 
certain specific thing which is required by the product or its function. And hence, they, accordingly, then there is a fourth step. Okay, that's the second step. Or the fifth step, and then then we go into the production like and something. Okay. Then we of course say, you know what, we want to market this. We want to show it off to people saying that hey, this is what it is. We have to find it. Let's say a TV ad and maybe we need to see. So new discrete arrives. People start sending it out of uh, the television by television. So today now, let's say most of these things are on uh, Facebook or something. So there's marketing on the Facebook side, right? Like you can always see a pop up like you're shopping for. Something in Amazon, your phone or, or FB starts showing you uh, relevant kind of uh, choices which customers choose. So let's say you bought a uh, laptop. Immediately you start seeing ads for you know accessories for the laptop, right? Like a cover or, or a camera or something. Or something that we have seen in the buy. Right? Then we talk about hardcore sales. So what is the difference between marketing and sales? Right? Marketing is about just seeing the product like Making awareness of the product and sales is actually selling the product, pricing, look at logistics, all this part. Of it. And then, of course, once you have done this entire cycle, then we come to know a new that okay, you know what, my next generation of product has to be new product. Right? So, let's see, let's go back to your uh, curriculum here. So, go and go to the I picked up the civil system, my professor, and I like have put them into a certain, uh, you know, uh, areas, right? I kept math as the first fundamental, and that's why the first question is that. Uh, second, of course, electrical and electronics have combined them to a general level. Okay. Uh, that's one uh, important thing to understand and that in engineering, also if I realize, uh, you see, if you look at all these computer electronics engineering and stuff, mechanical and electrical actually form the fundamentals of everything, and from there, all the other branches are really split down. So today, when you're studying electronics or telecommunications, you realize most of the courses are there in electrical and mechanical also. You need them at some point of time, anyways. So just being a core mechanical engineer or something is a very strong fundamental. And that's why in mechanical engineer, many times you see that having this uh, very uh, thought, process, thought process which is a little bit better than us because uh, the, we don't put a lot of time solving a lot of questions. We do that with a great engineer, right? A great hardware design engineer. So that, that is the way how we have to train our brains, and that is the way how mechanical engineers are trained by uh, doing the art, you know, graphic projections and also or you know, other graphic uh, projections. But the graphic uh, topics that they do as a subject, that involves a lot of thinking in the third dimension. So once you start thinking a lot more in the third dimension, your thought process always fuels to uh, an analytical cell of looking out of that box, right? You're always looking at something from what everyone is one way, right? So that helps in even software building or anything that the product will be right. Then electromagnetic fields and waves, I've just kept it from electric and electronics because it's a very core cool subject. There is a lot of uh, importance for RF engineers, a field which we hardly know about in Goa. Uh, I have come across because we have tried certifications for our senior class in a medical product. There we learn that how a device like your phone you cannot read anything, nor it can like accept, but in a certain band that is allowed, right? Because it is talking to the wireless tower anyway, but there is a certain uh, way or a method that it can transmit, it should not be happening across the board. Like it should not be given to your hand or your head and all that. So that's why there's a uh, misunderstanding or a lot of lack of knowledge, right? People say, oh, there's a mobile tower on my head and that is all really cancer. But not true and not false also. Because if you realize the microwave can cook you, right? You put your hand in the microwave and let it cook it on and on and on, you, your hand will come out Right? So, pretty much the same way. So, if you're living near a tower, you could be cooked. But that's where it is. there's something called specific absorption rate, which is a limit uh, assigned by for, you know, for all sorts of uh, electromagnetic devices, including your phones. Okay? And now, this experience for me was an exposure in magnetic resonance imaging because there it's the same. Electromagnetic field inside a magnet, MRI machine, where you have a head pod or something and someone telling you. But it's not really reading, it's actually accepting. But there also there was a method of, you know, why uh, and how much strength of uh, radioactivity that you can, not radioactivity, sorry, radio frequency that you can uh, send into a person, right? Then comes software, all kinds of software today, right? I mean, look at everything started from CC customers in our days, uh, just going and basic and 
on and today that is Java and I don't know what not, you know, a lot of it. So then digital logic, why digital logic is different from electronics, right? I mean, talking about just uh, uh, decision making, right? We're talking about yes, no, we're talking about voting, some kind. Um, so that's the thing, and sorry, I'm using my phone. This the call, and uh, then there's signal processing. Now, signal processing is an interesting one. Electronics and telecommunications course in Hawaii was one of the best in the country uh, with regards to signal processing side or image processing side. Uh, the fundamental fun part in MRI for me was that MRI is one such modality where modality where there is a signal processing, I and mean, when you do the signal, and the signal for the MRI machine, you can an image. So actually to get a better image, you have to actually come back and do a one image uh, for a two-dimensional output, right? It was a lot more trickier. The physics was different, it was a lot more uh, understanding of physics, and of course, then you have the human body to work with, right? So it makes it more complex. Firmware, every phone, every laptop, whenever you put a power on, why does it start on the phone, right? The bio, the firmware is there. So these things are there in every device, a Raspberry Pi that you use, a phone that you use. Question is, we never relate all the time. When we are studying, we study like donkey, you know, you listen to what the professor is saying, what the book is saying, what the professor is saying. Oh, where have I seen this? Where are these things? Where is the internet world where you guys are able to actually handle and look for a YouTube actually explain something better, right? And it gives you a more better concept and a clarity. Uh, unfortunately, all these things are not that simple. Then you learn economics, and why do you learn economics, right? Because you want to become an entrepreneur, I think you should go a little bit about money, and that's when. A little bit, quite a bit, but I would say it's important to get their head start on it. So that's why there is a base fundamental of economics and management thing. You know, tomorrow you become a manufacturing head of a company, and you're not doing it right now after college. What will you do? You have to look at saving money at the same time, managing quality, all that stuff. Excuse me, Janet. Yeah, the thing is, the thing is, uh, student, uh, people are not able to see the slides, only the first slide we are able to see. The slideshow is, I think, not happening. Okay. Yes, Gajanan, we can just see only one slide. Okay, okay, okay. Let me just share my entire screen then. Okay, so now do you see the whole screen? Do you see this? Yes, now it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. So I, I think I'm, I'm not sure and, everything. And can it be possible if you come closer to the screen because of voice clarity? Yeah, sure. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is my slide with about my stuff that I said. Uh, then I was just talking about the products that we built. Okay, like these versions that we built, and then I was on this slide where I was talking about the curriculum that. And the final one I was talking about is communication, right? And looking at communication with regards to uh, every kind of thing, um, let's say techniques we're talking about, right? The olden days we had uh, AM and FM uh, radio that we were looking at, and we were trying to learn how it works. In your case today, there is optic fibers coming to your house, uh, you know, uh, they don't know how they function, and you need to really understand how, uh, you know, they were doing the products and and all these other techniques work. And how do they compress that data, right? I mean, all cable takes a lot of ton of uh, data from them back to the place where you're getting this data. So these are technical skills that I want to really focus on, or rather say how your curriculum, all these subjects that we see are sometimes useless or disconnected from each other. The more important part here is this connection, right? You don't understand why maths is important then that's it not. Or you don't understand why maths is important then it's not there. You don't understand why maths is important in software. Or you don't understand how software and electronics uh, work together. Right? You feel these are all disconnected. Actually, they are not. So that's where my experience was that I didn't understand this. But when I started studying for my PhD students uh, back to HM, I realized that everything was one together. Because all that I was doing was studying the entire DE syllabus at one book. When you start studying everything together and with no pressure of even answering and you know, subject exam, it was more like any problem would come from there. Complete syllabus. Imagine how difficult it is, right? If you're talking about some 
uh, problem that you're putting on your different system or something like that, which relates like, to a function. You don't want to have function, it's just a mechanical process, but you could do it from a mass probability process. And then where does it apply? Oh, it could be a compression for that matter, or it's part of a compression. So for us, it is all that understanding is required that fundamentally everything comes down to narrow down to mass and physics, that's what I said. I'm just going back again to the definition and telling you how it relates. So signal processing, right? Uh, we talk about signal processing, we talk about material science, we learn hardware, software, things that do, right? And digital design and artificial intelligence. These are all like the core themes that we look at today. And I'll tell you why. Signal processing. Any, anything today, you're looking at a smart watch, right? What is it taking inside? You're getting some analog signal, right? You think that there is a light LED. Um, uh, giving out some red frequency and a pulse off, right? A blood oxygen. How is that computed? You have to look at that. If you study that alone is a single field of research, and you start seeing signals like ECG, right? Yeah, now I can take an ECG. Now there are ECGs which you like, you know, have been there for a long time when there are two fingers on, you know, two fingers from both hands, and the two index fingers on that plate, and there are single units. And oh, that's also a signal, that's an analog signal. The signal processing becomes a fundamental to everything. Everything is computer. Now I'm speaking to you, that's an analog signal. My microphone is making it digital and connecting it to the computer, sending it across to the Google server. You guys all are able, hundreds of people are able to see it or hear it at the same time. Right? Of course, considering that we have a data loss on whatever happens, maybe we are a bit of a you know, gap there. But other than that, it's pretty much true, right? Then we look at material science. Why would a nanomaterial or something be important to us? So all this doesn't make sense right now to you. But let's say tomorrow you build something, right? You become an entrepreneur like me in some way. And oh, that time you'll be like, okay, which kind of a plastic do I cover my hardware with, right? You have a hardware, it could be mechanical or electronics, does not matter. How do you cover it? You know, what kind of material? Oh, tomorrow you're making something, let's say a heavy medical surgical human body. Then the material science is a very different level. Right? Or you're trying to make some skin uh, or skin patch or something which is going to wrap around the person's body or anything like that, or you know, first aid or something. Those are nanomaterials. I mean, you have to really learn material science to understand how every material is functioning you know, under stress, pressure, temperature, everything. Right? All these kind of things. Hardware. Hardware. Now, when you say hardware as electronics, that we do what? You know, resistors, capacitors, all the brain, uh, brain board, and that's about it. We have never built a PC, right? Generally, we never do that. Really. It's never forced upon. But I, I did that myself and out of interest. Let me say I plumped every attempt I needed to, and uh, that's what I've done pretty much in my history, what is engineering is. And Dr. Mira is uh, one of these people who can vouch for it. <laughs> but all, all said and done, I did not waste my time. What I was doing is I was actually building stuff. So, you know, I made a circuit board for myself in my uh, one of my key projects. Now, I, I think finally projects. He actually made a PC. I got down, downloaded a software for extra PC, and I used to completely, you know, just learn it. Made a big board. It was not a small one. I didn't know how to make it smaller or anything like that. I just came up with some idea, made it. He actually went, he got it done from Bombay, you know, got PC manufacturer, got the plane, sold that girl's into a parts on it, and it worked. It attached to a computer and it worked. So all that was going on the front end was a C plus plus program. A good plot. The idea was that that you know we were able to do it. The idea is understanding the process of it. Because when you get into the industry, you're not going to do it. It's all outsourced, right? You go to a board house and you acquire the machine. But you should know the process. The idea is to know the process. And once you know the process, you're more confident in talking, learning. See, I'm saying I made a double-sided PC, and my product today has a six-layer thing. It's very complex. But at least you know the process of how things are going, why. Or at least certain points that you think you can value, right? Now coming to software. Even if you want to design a hardware today, that is uh, software which is used, right? And software is to simulate all the hardware. You don't really build it, right? It sometimes costs you a time to build the hardware. So we say, oh, why don't we emulate this by using software? So that's why you have all these. Uh, what was that uh, uh, design one that you are using? I'm not sure. I'm taking a look. Mm. Not like AutoCAD, you have something in uh, uh, electronics, right? What we use for uh, designs of uh, not math, but uh, any professor can help me with? 
uh, what is the CAD software that we use for uh, electronics and design? Um, what is the um, but anyway, so I'm saying that that is one side, and secondly, we do that little bit. So let's say you build something tomorrow, you build a product. So even today, a wireless. How many of you are wireless uh, speakers? Everyone has, right? But if you see the wireless speakers to talk to your phone or bring Bluetooth from your phone, there is this Bluetooth connection that has to be done. For that, there is a pair and cancel and all that stuff that comes, right? There's a passcode and all that. That kind of firmware level, now if you realize the speaker does not have a screen. But if it has a knowledge of the machine, you talk to another machine like the phone, and they can talk to you, and at the same time, for the user like you and me, it gives you enough uh, inputs to say, oh, yes, accept this, or reject this, right? So when you go into an airport and you put on your Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, you suddenly start connecting to all the people around, right? And then you reject the ones which you don't want to connect, because you don't want to give to anyone, and you don't want to spare you, right? So these are things which you understand that this is all one encompassing thing, you know, it all works together, but we need to understand how it works together and how to segregate what we study individually as one whole, uh, it's like a part of a whole mother system. Right? Same with digital design. Everything is digital design, right? So digital design is important for you to set up, you know, build a, let's say a mini computer, a calculator. How many of you attempt to building a calculator? I've never seen a hardware project come out of, uh, or, a, or a software project come out out of uh, Goa University, which is actually seen by people with the calculator. It's not something that you do for a final year, but I think definitely by the sixth semester, some of you will be But that's the fun. Then artificial intelligence. Everyone wants to get with the next big thing, right? In our day, it was probably Java that everyone wanted to get with Java programming. Uh, 10 years, 20 years down the lane, it's all artificial intelligence, neural networks, machine learning. People don't understand the fundamentals of that, okay, is back to mathematics. Absolutely back to mathematics. And if you are not good at mathematics, there's no way you can do anything else. So don't think it's a software. I and mean, many of you guys will probably think that, oh, these codes are available free online. Yeah, they are. I mean, open codes are available for a new network, right? But if you don't understand the printed black, uh, you know, or uh, backward uh, projection uh, algorithm, right? Backward uh, projection algorithm, whatever. That if you don't analyze, understand the convolution part, which comes from signal processing or anything, how are you going to work on it? Most importantly, it's not only the math fundamental, it's also understand artificial intelligence is doing on what some kind of data. Now that data is going to be what signals, right? Or a digital, or it is going to be something coming from your hardware software. So that is that is the problem. So So the idea is that, you know, how, how do we connect all these things? That's why you need to study and understand all these things together. Okay, so I'm coming back to the same screen that I created. Okay, uh, here I have made scales and six here that is taking fun. Economics, which I forgot to do it, but anyway. So what I'm saying is your syllabus and self-study, right? So why I'm saying self-study, there's nothing and no way you're going to be able to cover this in certain class. You'll have to kind of put in more hours yourself. But in a very structured manner. You can do that individually or as a group, whatever interest you right? See, some kids may be interested clearly on uh, on saying, you know what, I'm just studying engineering to understand it. So I'm not really for trying to become a designer. But the fact about everyone makes a mistake is that irrespective if you do uh, you know MBA after this or you become a doctor for that matter after engineering, it does not matter. It will be all the same because you need to really give your best at this time. Okay. So my more funda here is to say that academia is the best training period of your career. Okay, use it wisely and learn to apply what you try. Fine, so I'll go here now explaining what I was talking about one subject, right? And that was math and why I was saying you should focus it. Now I'll tell you how this all connects together. Maths, you have what? Theorems, you study transforms. Now I'll tell you what the fun part of transform is. If I say, if I ask any final year student or a third year student, saying, hey, uh, do you remember we studied uh, Laplace transform and Z transform and uh, Fourier transform? And that person says, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah we studied in signal processing. Right? You go and ask the same question to the uh, uh, mechanical guy, you say, yeah, yeah, we used it probably for some, you know what, control system. No, I think there was some machine that we were studying, and in that machine, the subject we had it. 
and you ask uh, the uh, computer science guys, they will say, oh yeah, yeah, we found unity with the Z transform and something there and there. Okay. Unfortunately, you guys studied this in mathematics also, right? In your math subjects, and no one seems to understand that this is the same thing. But why are we studying this one? Because if you realize when you study it from the mathematical side, you are really looking at it, saying, why is it even existing? That's the reason I was asking. You. So now I'll come back to my question of saying, why is this? What is the problem? Just tell me that, and you are good. If you have understood that much, you probably can do something with the concept. If you have not understood what is differentiation and integration, there is no point you understand anything to do with the concept. That's how it is. Then you are looking at statistics. Oh, what statistics? Like pi value, p value, <coughs> yeah, p value, um, you know, pi value, and whatever values come out. You don't know how to apply them. You just study it from the ground floor book. Yeah, this is the data. We do this, and that's all. We come up with a number, and we don't know what that number means. Why is that data like this, and how can we recreate something like this with our own data? Unfortunately for you guys who don't and think that this is what we need today, your entire AI neural networks ML part is completely based on statistics. Statistics is like a core thing, and to make it more difficult, people who have not understood probability, like me, <laughs> probability and statistics combinedly form the AI fundamental. So everyone who wants to go into AI, I'm telling you, sleep with your urban basic book, advanced in your engineering mathematics, and study statistics as much as you can from every possible source, and understand probability also because there is a level of signal processing a subject which uses probability and statistics to come up with answers, which are you know in the unknown area. It's like you know you are predicting it because the statistical value is inclined to say this is right, and that's why I will say this is right. Okay, so this whole thing becomes a lot more complex and completely mathematical exercise. So don't think it for me easy. Hence, burn as much of midnight oil you want to do now because tomorrow you're not getting time once you get into the industry. You get a job, there's no problem. Once you land the job, they will ask you to do it, and then you will be saying, "All that I know is only A and B, and I'm, I think I'll take that open software course. I'm in the code and I'll plug it into my software, and it will work." The problem is the open software code will only have certain boundaries like tolerance. It can give a positive result up to seventy-five percent, so you will have twenty-five percent of false positives coming. I'm not sure if you understand this language first of all, but I'm saying what is false positive, false negative. I'm just saying, let's say an error. You are going to get twenty-five percent error. How do you narrow that error to five percent? You have to add more, you know, math-oriented stuff to it. Like you have to really build a probability uh, algorithm in it or a statistical algorithm in it. You have to improve that. So nothing is going to come out easy. Linear algebra. Anyone who is looking at you know anything with regards to control systems, like really getting into physiological systems, the control systems area, uh, image processing, signal processing, linear algebra is your baby. You think it's all matrices, right? Now it's like this question I asked a few weeks about eigen vectors and eigen values. You studied that. I don't know if you have studied it by now. Have they studied it by now? The first year. I can vector I can value. I think we studied that even in twelve. Students, are you online? I don't hear any students uh, speaking out. Hello. Everyone, come for lunch or No, st students are there. Students are online. Someone who is answering me, that's what I'm saying. So, uh, any of the professors, uh, can you tell me in the first year they have they covered uh, eigen vectors, eigen values? Hello. Have you all studied eigen vectors, eigen values? Yes, 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 sir. Okay. So. If you realize, do you understand it from a system perspective? No, right. You just know that there is a matrix. There are some uh, four lines in it. You have to reduce one or two lines, and you understand it as an independent vector or whatever, and you come down saying that rank of the matrix is one. Now you don't understand how one rank can decide the system. Now I tell you how what happened in the American University when I studied. I realized how how that subject was important and how uh, it ended up. So uh, the professor was a. Uh, 
mechanical uh, background from MIT Stanford kind of guy, and uh, he explained us saying that let's say there is a equation given to you, right? There are six equations given to you. When I take the equation, I don't know what that system is, like, right? But I don't know how much dimension the system exists. In. So, considering I've given, given six equations, I take them into a matrix form, right? And I reduce the matrix, or I come down to the rank of the matrix. Once I find the rank of the matrix, I come to know that the system is uh, how many dimensions, so the rank or the eigenvectors of that. Uh, solution helps me understand the rank gives me the system dimension. So let's say I get a rank of five, then I know okay out of six equations I will be able to reduce one, and so my systems uh, you know dimensions are five dimensional system. And if you ask me what is a five dimensional system, then you know, aeroplane is a good example, which is a six dimensional system, right? And if you don't know how those six dimensions are, please look at online for a YouTube video or something like that, and you know what all the six dimensions are. So we are used to only starting from and we never think beyond it, right? Now, when, when you look at uh, your AI, again, we are looking at eight-dimensional or sixteen-dimensional methods, and those are huge and maybe beyond our thought process. We cannot imagine that, right? You have to think from a very mathematical perspective. And hence, linear algebra becomes very important. There is an open course where uh, from uh, MIT, uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and that is by Professor Gilbert Strang. There is a book also. And you can use that. That is one of the best, uh, you know, understanding of linear algebra. It's very advanced for your level, but it is great to understand if you want to have a career in any of these imaging or AI or all these other methods. Okay, um, I can definitely speak a lot about it, but not today. So coming then integration differentiation is what uh, has anyone any students put around the answer for what is integration and differentiation in the function? Other than I don't know if someone went and googled for it in the background. Okay, I'm not going to answer this because no one of you are answering me, uh, the question. So since you're not attempting it, I'll leave it for homework for you guys. But it's very simple. And then interpolation, right? Uh, why you need interpolation? You study that in numerical methods and uh, you study that. Not very clear, Gajanan. Hello? Yeah. Am I not clear? Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, Gajanan, yeah. Yeah, uh, someone was saying I'm not clear. What happened? Uh, no, your voice is breaking in between. Your voice is breaking in between. Oh, okay. Must be some data in between. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, better. Okay, uh, so um, interpolation, what I was saying about interpolation here is that you um, guys study it, um, mechanical, computer science terms study it, why do you study it, what do you need it for, right? So interpolation is something that, let's say tomorrow you are doing a statistical, you're finding a key value of some data, and that data is inadequate. So you have to extrapolate that data or interpolate that data, because the data is too finite, uh, too infinite for you, and you need to coming down to a small finite zone, hence you can interpolate, right? Find the intermediate, uh, what do you say, missing value. Or you want to, to take it to a finite, uh, infinite level, like you have a certain zone, you have data for three years, but you want to project it for six years, and see how that data can be projected to the proper data. And then, hey, I can extrapolate that data and see more boundaries of it, right? And look at how your algorithm works. So these are also important uh, things. And of course, interpolation, extrapolation is together. So, no one wants to answer to differentiation in interpolation, no surprise. Anyone, any student has figured it out? What I was asking for? Okay, I'll leave it in the QA if someone can come up with it. But anyway, so my advice overall here, uh, before I get to questions, is that chapters don't count. But if you wait for the last moment to study this, I'm telling you. Take my word, first thing is sit in a class and look at what the teacher says. If your lecturer or professor is even halfway good enough, right? Even halfway good enough, that's great because I'm telling you half the work is done if you study, sit in the lecture and study it. I mean, listen to it carefully. Then you study your chapter yourself, read it, and in a week. So 
consider now you're having like eight classes, right? Of whatever, it's uh, six subjects. Six subjects, let's say every week they're covering up, I don't know, one chapter, or maybe uh, in two weeks they're covering one chapter. Irrespectively, you have to finish reading that chapter. That so you really don't have much time in the eight hours that you're in college or something like that, and then whatever time you're left at home, right? So make sure you can stay closer to college. Don't go travel crazy one hour every day up and down at home. It doesn't make sense. Tell your parents, group up as boys and girls, career, figure out how to stay near college and campus and study hard. Put more time in your books rather and projects rather than going home and watching TV. That's my fundamental advice for all any professional. Therefore, books which are well articulated. Now, books are one more thing, you know, the Indian author books which are there from the sometimes are not so great in the concept that people tend to have a problem. Best way. <clears throat> Make a group of three or four people who are interested in studying. Each one read a different uh, book and then come up with the explanation of the concept. And each one explains the words so everyone understands it the right way and no one misses out. Make bullets to remember. Write everything. That's why it is a bold because everything that you write, you remember. Everything that you study and read and you forget in a few days. If you read it twice, you remember it a little more longer. But if you write, you will definitely remember it after the exams and the months. Okay, uh, design hardware searches for hobby, design software projects for hobby. Now, why am I saying this? Everything doesn't have to come from curriculum. Everything doesn't have to come from, like, you know, assignment days or something. It should be just fun. You should just enjoy. You're an engineer. Those, these four years, at least, you can engineer. Tomorrow, what you become is a decision. Enjoy your time. And for that time, you should really have to act to do something. See, even if you're a person who's come from no programming background, you know you cannot program. You need to start writing a small C program. No? So at least I think A plus B plus C, and you should be able to produce that answer in the output. Simple, right? If you have to come up with that, you have to just do it. I and mean, then someday you have to write it. And writing is that fundamental also is very important because you never know what will uh, you know life is for you so at an outlook. So you need to be really, really uh, steady in those things. Hardware subjects, why? As electronics and telecommunication students have a good handle. Just helps down the lane. Every clamper, paper, circuit that you study, you take it in the lab, but you never go and really have a breadboard for yourself. Actually, everyone should have a kit back home. You don't have an oscilloscope, I know, but there are a lot of oscilloscopes available all for the e software which are free. And you can use that through a serial cable and figure out how to get a signal there. Okay, so there's a way out if you want to really do it. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, start finally a project as a business plan. Okay, why a business plan? You don't need the money, you keep the idea there. Thank you. It's a final year project. You don't need the money for it. You have to fund it or you only use the pocket money, right? So, the only thing is you need an idea. Start thinking, and for ideas, you need to read. And you need to read some, uh, you know, electronics for you magazine or something which is, you know, tech news or something like that, which is always in the news. Of course, you will not be able to build a whole AI model or something, the most latest stuff, right? But you'll be able to build a small component of that. And that is what is expected from you in a, in a, a curriculum uh, graduate program. Then smaller steps to every chapter. Okay, now this I was studying even in an agile, I was uh, learning program management or something. And there are agile and scrum masters. Okay? These are like specialized uh, expertise in software programming. Now what I understand there, what I teach in today's method is that don't build a complete website together or the whole project together. You can build one one step. So all they're saying is first step is to say, okay, I want to capture the user's name and email. That's all. I just need to capture that, get it to the server, and that's it. One project is complete. So I think just getting those things done, that's why I'm saying smaller steps in every chapter. Every chapter that you read, don't try to read 100 pages in one day. It's not going to happen. Put yourself to a reading habit of saying, I'll read five pages of this chapter today. I'll read five pages of another subject today. So I'm building in a, in a whole day, I've read four subjects, but five pages of each. So five to ten pages you read in a day, but you realize there's a lot of introduction and all, which is an easy read. You need to really understand the concept. You need to read the sections very systematically and understand what the problem is explained, right? Because that is exactly what they're asking you to how to solve the problem. You need to go really slow on that. <clears throat> so solve as many problems behind the chapter to build a sound understanding of the Like 25, 30 problems, I think, there were 50 problems. It is good to get a good understanding about, let's say, not a sales. Or a feminine theorem or a clipper clamper circuit because all those combination permutations, every change is. See, you don't know what a university exam is going to throw at you. 
<laughs> but the idea is to understand everything for yourself. And frankly, those marks don't matter which are on the market. Will definitely matter what you really know, and, uh, and that's why you will see people who really take great uh, theory marks are not necessarily the ones who score very well in the Y one. At least our days, those were the days. Uh, you know, I don't know how it is now. <laughs> so thank you and questions. So I'm open for questions now. I'll get back to my. Uh, Uh, students, if you have any questions, students, if you have any questions, please. I think we all want to learn. I request Professor Avila to propose vote of thanks. If there are no any questions, then we can go further. Professor Avila. Yes, Satish. Okay. Students, do you have any questions? Satish, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are audible. Okay. Uh, do students any questions? Any doubts? Anything you would like to ask? You would like to share something? Yeah, any question in general also, I mean, I'm open to any question yes. that matter with regards to the career path or you have a question on how to... Re yes, related to innovation, ideas, yeah. startup, related to curriculum, related to anything for that matter. Satish, has anybody typed in the inbox? No. Okay. Uh, no, I am watching that. Okay. Students, as you are aware, Gajanan is a member of IIT, that is an Institution Innovation Council. And we get a lot of inputs from him uh, with regards to uh, innovation and entrepreneurship. In fact, he is, uh, I think, Niraman is a student too, right? Gajanan, you were a student of Niraman, yes. right? Yes, yes. Yes. Okay, so it's probably it's really a matter of pride for man to see him doing so well in life and students for us definitely some years down the line it's going to be a matter of pride for us to see you doing so well in life and probably coming back to your institution and contributing so Gajanan, on this note i would like to thank you so much for your contribution towards iic that is institution innovation cell contribution towards e cell and all your support and guidance that you have provided us so far and we know for sure that you are there for us all the time at any point of time if we require any guidance any help in for any events and any activities we all know that you are there for us so thank you for your association with us uh, though uh, you are not an alumni of Don Bosco College of Engineering, but we are really happy to have you on board with us at Don Bosco College of Engineering. And thank you so much for this talk. Thank you and Good. stay blessed and stay safe. You're welcome. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, students, please thank you, please, uh, please, 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 please,